welcome to another video. As you can tell from the title and the thumbnail, today I am bringing you my July book haul. I acquired a few books in the month of July and as we're, you know, a little bit into August now, I think it's about time I haul them so I can scan them and get them on the shelves. <laughs> I have 16 books to take you through today. Some I bought myself, some were gifts, one was sent to me by the author and a few were from Fairy Loot boxes. So let's get through them in those categories, starting with Fairy Loot books. In June's Fairy Loot box, which I don't think I got until early July, um, there were a couple of books and those were Forest of Souls by Laurie M. Lee and The Gilded Ones by Namina Fauna. This is a beautiful book. Look at those edges. And I think this is an ARC copy. I don't know too much about what these books are about, but I'm sure I probably mentioned it in the videos where I um, unboxed them. This is gorgeous. And this has a lot to do with spiders, I think, because there's like spiders all over the cover and all inside it. Um, after years of training to become the queen's next royal spy, Sersha Ashwin's plans are derailed when shamans attack and kill her best friend. Then Sasha somehow restores Sengo to life. Okay, resurrection. Interesting. Unveiled as the first soul guide in living memory, Sersha is summoned to the domain of the Spider King. For centuries, he has used his influence over the Deadwood, an ancient forest possessed by souls, to enforce peace between the kingdoms. Now, with the trees growing wild and untamed, only a soul guide can restrain them. Ooh, interesting. So that's Forest of Souls. And then the Gilded Ones. Are we girls or are we demons? Are we going to die or are we going to survive? In this bold and immersive fantasy, a young heroine fights to save a world that would dare tame her and discovers she is her own fiercest weapon. Deku lives in fear of the blood ceremony that will determine whether she can become a member of her village. If she bleeds red, she will belong. But on the day of the ceremony, her blood runs gold, the colour of impurity, of a demon. These both sound great. So yeah, that was June's fairy loot box. And then in July's fairy loot box, we have Shielded by Kaylin Flanders. This cover is gorgeous. I really like green on books um, and it's got beautiful black sprayed edges as well. This one I believe is about a princess who wants to like fight in a battle because there's this like looming threat on her kingdom but she knows that she's better off being used as a political pawn to marry off for alliance but on her journey to her new husband I believe their caravan is attacked and the threat is like much bigger than anyone ever knew new and she's got to do something about it I think. Seems a bit more generic to me. Um, this one doesn't inspire me to read it quite as much as these ones do. Yeah, fairy loot books, yay! <laughs> Next up, I have The Story of Babushka by Catherine Flores. Flores. This was sent to me by the author in exchange for me to read and review. I have not read it yet, but I do plan on reading it in August. This is, as the title would suggest, The Story of Babushka, otherwise known as the Russian nesting dolls. And in this story, like each of the dolls inside the nesting doll are like different aspects of the personality, I think, of the babushka. As you can see, it's all of the little people. So Paula represents babushka's talents, Viola represents babushka's wisdom, Mary represents babushka's heart and inner voice. And like all of the dolls represent a different part of the babushka. And it is the story of that. I'm looking forward to reading this. I am really into like Slavic folklore and stuff and Russian vibes in books so this seems like something I might enjoy. It is of course a children's book like introducing them to the story of the babushka but love me some kids books, love me some Russian vibes so I'm looking forward to reading this and I will also be hosting a giveaway for a copy on my Twitter towards the end of August so keep an eye out for that. And of course thank you to Catherine for sending me this book. Let's go through the books I was gifted next. So first up on my stack we have Crowfall by Ed MacDonald. This is the third book in the Raven's Mark trilogy. The first one is Blackwing, the second one is Raven Cry. This is the third and final book in the trilogy. Is it called The Raven Cry? The Raven's Mark trilogy, book three. I haven't read any of them, but the cover's really cool to me. 
I, I just need to pull myself together and actually read them. But this was a gift from Diana, so thank you very much, Diana, for sending Crowfall my way. Um, this trilogy is kind of like a grim, dark vibe, but other than that, I really don't know too much about it, other than I want to read it because it's something to do with ravens and I'm a sucker for birds on covers. <laughs> and Diana also sent me Magic Order Volume 1 or Book 1, um, which is a Netflix comic. Like, you can't see that, but this is like Netflix's debut comic book series. Yes, presenting Netflix's debut comic book series. I didn't know that Netflix were going into comics, but they are. Um, when I threw this one on my wish list. I had no idea it was anything to do with Netflix. It just looked really cool and it's about magical people that like live amongst us and you don't know they're there and they protect people from the dead and ghosts and stuff. Um, there's a reason you've never seen a ghost. By day these people live among us as our friends, neighbours and co-workers. By night they are the sorcerers, magicians and wizards that protect us from the forces of darkness. I think I got that synopsis pretty good. Um, but yeah, this just sounds really cool and I really want to read it. So thank you Diana for both of these. You spoil me. Next up I received hmm, Victoria Schwab's Shades of Magic, The Steel Prince, The Rebel Army, I think this is the third one, yeah the third one, and this was a gift from Harriet, so thank you very much Harriet for sending this my way. Everyone knows I love Victoria Schwab, I am a sucker for the Shades of Magic world in general, I adore it, and the comic book series is really no exception to that. If anything, I tend to rate the comics a little bit lower just because there's not enough content in them for me, but I still love the story and ugh, the characters. The comic series follows King Maxim back when he was Prince Maxim, known as the Steel Prince, um, and I'm really enjoying seeing that. If anything, I want more of it. So yeah, this is volume three in that, and I can't wait to read it. I mean, I would hope I could get to it soon, but who knows. Um, but yes, thank you very much, Harriet, for sending me volume three in the Steel Prince series. Next up, I received The Bone Houses by Emily Lloyd-Jones, and this was a gift from Erin, so thank you very much, Erin, for sending me this. I threw this one on my wish list mainly because it's written by Emily Lloyd-Jones, and sort of recently I read The Hearts We Sold from her and really liked her writing. It was really easy to get through. Um, I had a very pleasurable time reading that, so I want to read more of her stuff. Um, and this one, I believe, is about a grave digger bringing the dead back? Something to do with that. No warrior could stop the risen dead, but perhaps a grave digger could. Okay, so maybe the grave digger stops the risen dead. 17-year-old Rin cares only about two things, her family and her family's graveyard. Since the death of her parents, Rin and her siblings have been scraping together a meagre existence as grave diggers in the remote village of Colbrun, which sits at the foot of a harsh and deadly mountain range that was once home to the Fae. The problem with being a grave digger in Colbrun, though, is that the dead don't always stay dead. Sounds real good, and I'm looking forward to reading this at some point, as I now know that I quite like Emily Lloyd-Jones writing. So thank you very much, Erin, for sending me this one. Next up I have The Queen of the Conquered by Kaysen Callender. This was a gift sent to me by Megan, so thank you very much Megan for sending me this one. And this is about a young girl whose family were massacred by colonizers and then the new king or like self-proclaimed king of this land is going to choose his successor from a like selection of royal or noble families and our main character is looking to take this opportunity to uh, seek revenge for what has happened to her family at the hands of this man. Sounds like it could be real fun. I want to prove to them that they were wrong to underestimate me. I want to see them burn for what they did to my family. Revenge story against a man that fully deserves it. A powerful story of colonialism, conquest and revenge. Queen of the Conquered starts a riveting epic fantasy duology set in a Caribbean inspired world. This sounds like it's gonna be really brutal and I'm really there for that. So thank you very much Megan for sending me this one. Next up we have The Ship of Shadows by Maria Kuznia. This was a gift from Gavin, this was something that he pre-ordered for me for my birthday, so thanks Gav for that. This cover is gorgeous, look at that, oh there goes the gift note, look at that cover. Ugh. And it's illustrated by Carl James Mountford who is 
one of my favourite middle grade illustrators. One of my favourite. He is my favourite middle grade book cover illustrator. I have loved everything that I've read that he has illustrated. So hopefully this is no different. I know that Gavin loved it. I know that Pris loved it. I know that Ashley loved it. Everyone seems to have loved this, so I'm really looking forward to reading it myself at some point. And uh, yeah, it's about a girl who I think joins a pirate crew. Um, Alasia is a dreamer who longs for a life of magic and adventure. When a mysterious ship arrives in her Spanish harbour city, crewed by a band of ruthless women, Alasia knows it sailed right out of a legend and it wants her. But life aboard the Ship of Shadows is more than even she bargained for. It will take all of Elijah's strength and skill to gain the trust of her fellow pirates and discover what they are risking everything to find. Sounds right up my street. I'm really looking forward to reading it. And, uh, that's all there is to it. So thanks Gavin for this one. Next up we have A Song of Wraiths and Ruin by Roseanne A. Brown and this was a gift sent to me by Kitty so thank you very much Kitty for sending this my way. This cover is absolutely stunning. I love it. Like just look at it. It's beautiful. And this sounds so good. So this follows a young boy called Malik, I think. Yes, Malik. And there's a festival going on in this war-stricken country that Malik lives in. And his younger sister is abducted by like evil spirits or ven vengeful spirits abduct his sister. And in order to bargain for his sister's freedom, Malik has to kill the princess, I think. However, we also follow the princess whose mother was assassinated and I'm pretty sure she is gonna bring her mum back to life. Is that what this says? Yes. Grief-stricken, Karina decides to resurrect her mother through ancient magic, requiring the beating heart of a king and she knows just how to obtain one by offering her hand in marriage to the victor of the Solstasia competition, which is a festival that's going on at the same time as everything else. So, um, everyone wants to kill everyone, resurrect people, fight with vengeful spirits. It sounds wild and I'm really excited to read this. I know that a lot of people have recently and have really enjoyed it and I hope I do as well. So thank you very much, Kitty, for this one. I cannot wait to read it. Next up, we have The Poppy War by R.F. Kuang. This was sent to me by Rebecca, so thank you very much, Rebecca, for sending me this little prezi. The Poppy War is a book that has intimidated me for a long time because a lot of people have read it and absolutely adore it, and I feel like I will too, therefore I'm terrified of it. Um, I know that it's apparently really brutal and bloodthirsty of a book, um, but that sounds like something I would really enjoy. It follows a young girl called Rin who is enrolled in the most elite military school in the kingdom and I think it's like how learning about war and the realities of war are very different but it's real, real brutal. Lots of war. And I'm pretty sure there's like some element of truth in this as well, like it's loosely based upon a true story. But yeah, lots of war, lots of brutality. Sounds like something I would really enjoy reading. I'm just really terrified of it because I think I'm gonna love it and therefore that intimidates me. Find the logic. I, I can't. <laughs> and then the last gift I have is Green Glass House, which was sent to me by Fran. So thank you very much, Fran, for this little prezi. This is a middle grade mystery that it sounds real cosy and fabulous. I've heard fantastic things about it and I really think I'm going to enjoy it. Who doesn't like a little middle grade mystery? Um, this is about a young boy, I believe, who lives in this like hotel and it's supposed to be quite a quiet time of year but lots of mysterious guests are checking in and there's all sorts of weird things going on. So classic mystery, get to the bottom of what is going on here. Um, I don't know too much more than that, but I've heard fantastic things about it and think that I'm probably gonna love it. So thank you very much, Fran, for sending me this adorable mystery that I cannot wait to read. <laughs> Bonus points, it's floppy. <laughs> And then finally we have a few books that I bought for myself, um, starting off with The Highland Falcon Thief by M.G. Leonard and Sam Sedgman. This is book one of the Adventures on Trains series, middle grade about adventures and mysteries on trains. I've heard fantastic things about this and I picked this up mainly on Gavin's recommendation 
that the plot twist that happens in here is really good. So I'm looking forward to reading this and finding out all about that. It's been on my mind and I wanted to get my hands on it, so I did exactly that. So I think this follows a young boy and his uncle on the Highland Falcon train, which is like the most famous train, the most Britain's most famous steam train, and a precious jewel is stolen or goes missing and our main character finds himself like in the middle of this investigation somehow. Sounds mysterious. I'm looking forward to reading it at some point. Another book that I picked up on Gavin's recommendation is The Vanishing Trick by Jenny Spangler. So this, I think, is about a bunch of orphans that go missing, stroke, get abducted by this mysterious woman. Um, called Madame Pinchbeck. Yeah. So our main character, Leander, um, meets Madame Pinchbeck and he's an orphan and she promises to give him a job and a home and all these luxuries in exchange for his mother's precious locket. But her bargain isn't a fair one. She enchants the locket, turning it into a magical cabinet and trapping Leander inside to be summoned and vanished at will. Sounds mysterious to me and a little bit creepy. But yeah, this guy isn't the only orphan that she has abducted and he meets some others and I assume they try and break this curse on this locker and free themselves. Um, so yeah, sounds magical and mysterious and a bit dark. <laughs> and then finally the last book that I picked up for myself was The Train to Impossible Places by P.G. Bell. I picked this up because it was playing on my mind a lot, I was thinking about it, and it is also the bonus prompt book for the Touch of Whimsy Readathon Adventures Through Wonderland. I will link the announcement video for that somewhere, but it is our bonus book, so group book for that readathon, and we will have a live show discussing it, myself, Gavin, Lexi, and Kaylin. So um, if you want to get yourself a copy to join in on that, that'd be great too. Um, but this is about a young girl who is at home, living her life, and an impossible train bursts through her home, just, you know, straight through the home, um, and she boards this train that is capable of going to all sorts of impossible places, including space, the bottom of the ocean. This train shouldn't exist and it shouldn't be able to go to the places that it goes, but, you know, turns this girl's life upside down. Um, and I think she joins the, like, delivery service on this train, and the fate of the impossible places is in her hands. Sounds like a wild ride, so I'm looking forward to reading this one for the um, Adventures Through Wonderland readathon. Uh, so yeah, that is everything that I acquired in the month of July. I hope you have enjoyed this little book haul. If you have, give us a thumbs up. Chat to me down below. If you've read any of these books or want to talk to me about any, don't spoil anything for me though, then let me know down below what I should prioritise getting to, or if you've loved any of these particularly, that would be great. Um, but yeah, I hope you have enjoyed, I hope you're having a good day. I'm gonna scan these books, get them on the shelves, and um, enjoy the rest of the sunshine, because I apparently just like to film on the hottest days of the year. It's really hot. <laughs> so thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!